sorry about that. Ironically, my computer froze. Um, now, um, what you're going to want to do here is you're going to want to allocate the amount of memory that you're going to be using. Uh, sorry about that. That was my phone. Uh, that you're going to want to reserve for this virtual memory. Uh, now, because this USB stick is only four gigabytes, that's the only amount. That's the amount of space that I can reserve for it. But like I said, because I have some important information on this USB from some schoolwork on it, uh, I can't. Uh, I'm not going to do that. But what essentially what you're going to be doing is you use this device. You're going to click OK. Um, you're going to be prompted saying something along the lines of, "Are you sure this will format your USB? You will lose whatever information is on that USB. So if you need that, use either use a different USB or store that information somewhere else." Um, uh, another thing that we can do is turn off unused Windows 7 features. Now the easiest way I find to do this is you're going to go to the start menu and you're going to go to control panel. Now within control panel you're going to want to go to programs and programs and features. Whoops, go back. Turn Windows features on or off. Uh, this is completely personal because it depends on the features that you feel that you use in Windows 7. For example, I've disabled the games because I rarely ever play these games. Again, I have the indexing service um, unticked. I also have, um, I'm also not using the Internet Explorer 8 service because, uh, or feature because I don't actually use Internet Explorer. I use either Google Chrome or Firefox depending on uh, what I'm gonna be doing. Uh, other things that you can disable, are um, <clears throat> remote, uh, remote, or is it? Uh, here it is. Yep, yeah. uh, remote differential compression. Now, if you don't transfer a lot of uh, uh, a lot of uh, files over your network, then you could easily disable this, and it would probably speed up your network, or your sorry, speed up your computer. Um, this is because this service is essentially, like it says there, uh, used when, you tra when you're transferring information over a network. Um, other things that you can disable include IIS, Internet Information Services. Um, now, if you're doing any sort of scripting, for example, ASP, you're going to want to leave that enabled. But for me, I'm not, so I am going to disable it it disabled. Uh, there, th like I said, this is completely personal and up to you. You can do whatever you feel that you use or don't use. Um, and this is what I've done here. So if you want to look at what I've done, uh, you can follow suit. If not, it's completely up to you. Um, there are a few other things that we can do. For example, I don't have it up right now, but I know uh, quite a few people use the Windows sidebar. Um, again, that is just unnecessary use of resources for your computer. And if you have a limited amount of RAM, you'll really make it'll really make a difference if you disable that. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to right click on that if you have it open, and you're going to want to go to the properties and you're going to want to disable it and make sure that it doesn't start when your computer boots. Um, Another very important thing that I haven't yet discussed is we're going to be going, uh, I'm on a laptop right now, but any computer can do this. Um, a lot of computers have something called power options. Um, on a laptop, it, it's a little bit different because if you are using it like a laptop should be used for its portability and you're taking it around with you, if you change the power settings, your battery life may last uh, less time, which may or may not be important to you. Um, however, that being said, on a desk, oh, mic fell down. That being said, on a desktop, this really wouldn't make a difference. Um, the only thing that it would make a difference in is the amount of power uh, that your that your computer consumes. Um, so we're going to want to go to the control panel here and under system and security you'll see power options here you're going to want to click that and as you can see here I already have high performance selected now what will likely be selected for you by default 
is in my case because this is a laptop HP recommended there's or it'll be something along the lines of balanced um, and again because this is a laptop I have the power saver option I'm pretty sure desktops have that option as well but you're gonna wanna select high performance that'll allow your computer to use the maximum amount of energy that it needs in order to run at full capacity so that's very important that you do that um, there are a few softwares that you can use in order to help speed up your computer such as uh, registry cleaners um, as well you're going to want to on a regular basis use a anti-spyware program, program I recommend spybot search and destroy very useful um, you're going to want to definitely run an antivirus scan at least once a week. Um, usually what I end up doing is I usually have uh, friends over Friday night. So what I end up doing is scheduling the uh, scan for around 8 o'clock Friday night each week. And then I have the computer automatically turn off when the scan is done. Uh, you can look for how to set that up on your own on a, uh, somewhere else. But um, you're going to definitely want to do that. Now, hopefully this video has helped you speed up your computer and achieve the speed that you want it to be running at, because at the end of the day, that's all that really matters. So, like I said, I hope this video helped you. Don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys all again next time.